amazing range of user research methods to choose from to try to dial in problems with increasing precision and then generate ideas directly to solve those problems in the most efficient way. The challenge with that is that purely problem-led thinking can result in really functional solutions. Solutions that don't reach cultural resonance, higher order emotion, or memorability. An example of a company that does do this and did this well was Apple, probably the best example. They created desire where there wasn't any. They created demand by transforming culture around personal technology. And this extends into software and services as well. So if you take ride sharing, there are dozens of ride sharing companies and apps that exist that are perfectly functional, perfectly usable, solved a problem, and yet you've probably never heard of them. Where, whereas Lyft is a brand that did resonate, that did have a distinct set of values and expressed that really potently in every service touch point that they had. And importantly, it's not just about the color palette, the pink, the pink mustache, the typeface. It's about having a distinct set of values that facilitates an interaction between human beings that's different than any of the competitors. They change the culture in a lot of ways around ride sharing. So culturally transformative solutions require more than just problem solving, more than just going linearly from problem to solution. I'd argue they require creative inspiration and that this is what enables us to elevate from just solely solving a problem to making an impact on a much higher level. In other words, I believe these two things are linked, that the undervaluing of creativity creates in bland, dilute sameness of brands. Creative inspiration yields better brands. So, if we agree that that's one of the things that makes a brand, then the question is how? How to nurture one of the most important ingredients in building a brand that counts? And as I said, I think we have happily so much methodology and practice around user-centered design and data-driven design that it's fairly well understood, particularly in a product management community. But very little is understood in terms of creative inspiration and the practice around that. So I'm gonna share three tips today with three stories from Casper of how we've built a brand that counts by nurturing creativity as a key ingredient. The first way is to experiment creatively, not just rationally. And this is a story about the way that we entered brick and mortar retail. So when we began concepting retail stores, we knew that our experience there should center on a trial experience. That was the need that was known from customers. People can't try a mattress online, you have to order it first. People wanted to interact directly with our products before making the purchase, and so the reason we entered brick and mortar was in a lot of ways to support that behavior. So we knew we wanted to center the experience around it. We knew what people need when it comes to a trial experience. We'd frame this problem so well. They need privacy, they need quiet, they need products to try. And those were the things that we were designing for. So we came up with a solution that solved that problem and it was the idea of fitting rooms. Borrowing from the metaphor of a fashion store, you go in the back, you try your products, you have privacy, you have quiet, <laughs> and you have products to try. And they were nice. They're well-designed, they were pleasing, they were palatable. We were all set to move forward with this, drawing up plans, and yet, at the same time, we had another concept running. We had a temporary pop-up experience running in San Francisco that was a bit of an experiment. It was called the Casper Wake Up. And the whole idea was that it was a retail experience that was meant to encapsulate the feeling of waking up after a perfect night of sleep. So we recreated the sights, sounds, and feels of a perfect San Francisco morning inside of a retail space. It was intensely creative. There were oversized birdhouses, which you could walk into to try a bed. There was astroturf. There was light that streamed into the ceilings that simulated sunlight in the morning. We served orange juice and coffee, obviously. 
there was bird song, like birds chirping as a soundtrack playing at all times. And the whole experience was like stepping into an alternate reality where you were well rested. So we ran this and we learned it worked. It was the highest traffic store and the highest sales of the fleet compared to similar markets with a different concept. And the interesting thing I find about this is that being solely problem oriented wouldn't have led to birds chirping, yellow houses, and astroturf. It came from creative inspiration. There is no way that data could have created that solution. Data validated that solution, but it couldn't have generated it. It had to come from somewhere else, and it had to come from a willingness to run an experiment that was more risky. And in, in reality, we actually did run <laughs> many experiments over the two years before we entered retail through pop-ups and other experiments before we built our permanent stores. We've since built out this concept. So we operationalized it, built it into our first permanent store in NoHo here in New York, have optimized and iterated it since. It continues to be both provocative and high performing. And one of the best things about it to me is it brings joy to people. It brings so much uh, joy and a sense of discovery that people share it on social media. And again, Zooming out and looking at five years ago, if we thought the people would be sharing a mattress shopping experience <laughs> on social media, would have thought you were crazy. Our retail stores have also become a destination as a result of this. Our stores have drawn people who weren't in consideration for a mattress, who are just interested in engaging with our brand and interested in exploring sleep. And the most important thing about this is that the success of it was a concept that didn't come from a culture of why. And that is in direct tension, I think, to a lot of the methods that we use to frame up problems. It came from a culture of why not. So for each of these, I'll share some takeaways, how to approach these efforts with your own teams, to experiment creatively, not just rationally. Don't force rationalization of every idea. Some ideas cannot be quantified up front, and if we had forced rationalization of that idea, we might have killed it too early. Second, run some why not experiments. Expect some, if not many, to fail. You have to find a way to protect some space for riskier things. And they can be calculated risks, but you have to take some risks. And third, aim for provocative, not just likable. It's not enough to just be pleasing and palatable. It may not create as much impact as if you swung higher. Second way to build a brand that counts. Take hikes, not just sprints. What I mean by this is that we have to move fast. We all do. We structure almost all of our work on sprints. Um, but every other, uh, every other quarter, or in our case, every quarter, um, we take time to go broad, not straight. One of the ways we do this at Casper is called Dream Days. So Dream Days are, in a lot of ways, like an open-ended hack week. They're an opportunity for us to explore ideas beyond our regular product roadmap. And the idea is that it's actually not problem-oriented. It's completely open-ended. People just come up with ideas, three days, brainstorm, and people pool and band around the best ideas that they want to build. It's democratic. Um, people work across PMs, designers, engineers to refine those ideas and build them within a really short period of time. And things that come out of Dream Week are things like this, a day to night transition on our website that reflects nighttime and the fact that people shop at night. Or a team favorite, it's bedtime somewhere that reinforces this idea that sleep is universal and bedtime is universal and adds some humanity and a little bit of zing to our experience. We also go broad as part of our core product development experience, so or product development process, rather. Uh, so two years ago, apart from Dream Week, on our physical product team, we brainstormed a lot, a lot of ideas around how to uh, improve the sensory experience around sleep. So 
appeal to different senses, sight, sound, smell, feel. We came up with concepts like a pillow that plays music and a scent diffuser and a bunch of concepts around temperature regulation. And what came out of that was glow, our light, our smart light that helps you wind down at night to fall asleep. And honestly, had we tried to approach this from a purely problem-led way, what's the best way to wind down or how might we solve the problem of getting people to calm down at night? I'm not sure we would have come up with this. We came up with this by prototyping and brainstorming and going broad and getting tangible really quickly. So take hikes, not just sprints. Some takeaways to take back. Carve out time at least once a quarter to go out really broad. Make, don't just think about ideas. Uh, really believe tangibility breeds creativity and that especially wild ideas really won't get built unless they're tangible. <laughs> and then third, have fun. 